In this question, we are asked to determine how many units that need to be made on each machine in order to minimize the total cost. We can see from the question that the total cost function is given to us directly right here. It's C of X plus C of Y. We're going to be using the method of Lagrange multipliers in order to solve for X and Y. And to do that, we will first need to come up with a lowercase f of x, y. This is a function of two variables, and it's a function that I like to refer to as my objective function. The objective is basically what you're trying to either minimize or maximize in the question. Again, in this question, we're trying to minimize the total cost. So in order to write our objective function, we're going to need to write a function that represents the total cost. Now, we'll stick with the notation of lowercase f of x, y. But just keep in mind that the question is using c of x, y to represent total cost. So they're basically the same thing. And we can see again that that's going to be equal to c of x plus c of y. Now, c of x is given to us right here. And of course, c of y is right underneath it. So we basically just have to add these two functions together to create our total cost function. So it will be 10 plus x squared over 6 plus 200 plus y cubed over 9. There is your total cost function. That is your objective. It's your lowercase f of x, y. Why don't we simplify it? We can add the 10 and the 200. So we'll just make this 210 plus. And then the x squared over 6, I like to write that as 1 sixth x squared. It makes taking derivatives a little easier. And then similarly, we'll have 1 ninth y cubed. So again, this is your f of x, y. So far, so good. We can see that we also need a lowercase g of x, y. And that will come from a constraint that is given in the question. The constraint is going to be the equation that involves the number in the problem. Now, the direct number that we were given here was 10,100. So the constraint equation is actually going to be right here. But it's important to understand that we have to take that constraint equation and we have to set it equal to zero. So that's a very important step in order to develop your g of x, y. So let's take this equation. Why don't we move it down below? We'll label this the constraint. And again, we are constrained so that the sum of the units made on each machine is exactly 10,100. We'll subtract the 10,100 on both sides. So that way we get the right-hand side equal to zero. That becomes your g of x, y function, this right here. So we'll write g of x, y is equal to x plus y minus 10,100. Okay, we've got two out of the three functions. The third and final function we need is this uppercase f of x, y, lambda. Lambda is a new variable. It's called the Lagrange multiplier. And if you look very carefully, you can see that to come up with f of x, y, lambda, there's a little typo here. Make this a plus sign. We simply have to take our lowercase f of x, y, and then add that to lambda multiplied by our lowercase g of x, y. So we're going to be using the two functions we've adopted earlier, and we're going to write our third function. So capital F of x, y, lambda. Again, this will equal the sum of this function. So we'll recopy that. And then plus lambda multiplied by our little g of x, y. Now, personally, I like to distribute my lambda into the parentheses, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that would complete step one of the Lagrange multiplier process. We move on to step two, and we can see that in step two, we have to compute three partial derivatives of capital F, one with respect to x, one with respect to y, and then one with respect to lambda. So let's begin with the partial derivative of capital F with respect to x, Remember, when you're doing a partial derivative with respect to x, you want to treat y and lambda as constants. You might want to think of them as just your favorite number. So if your favorite number is 3, you can imagine that both y and lambda are equal to 3. So we're going to go through term by term and compute the derivatives with respect to x. Now, the derivative of 210 would just be 0. 1 6x squared, we're going to do that with respect to x. So we just use a power rule. 
multiply the power by the coefficient, that would give us 2 sixths, which of course simplifies to 1 third. And then we'll have x raised to the first power. Remember, you have to subtract 1 from the power when doing the derivative. Now, this would be all a constant because obviously 1 ninth is a constant and y is also being treated as a constant. So the derivative of that term would just be 0. Then the derivative of lambda x would just be lambda. So we'll have plus lambda. The derivative of lambda y would be 0. And same with the last term because those are all constants. So that would complete the derivative with respect to x. We'll do the derivative with respect to y next. <clears throat> Excuse me, so this case we will treat x and lambda as the constants. So the derivative of 210 is 0. The derivative of this term will also be 0 because that's all a constant. We'll do a power rule for this term. So we're going to have 3 ninths, which reduces to 1 third, and then y squared. This derivative would be 0. Lambda y would just go to lambda. And then the derivative of that last term would be 0. So now we can get the third derivative. It's going to be with respect to lambda. And in this case, you're going to treat x and y as your constants. So the derivative of 210 is 0. The derivative of that term would be 0. That term's derivative would be 0. Lambda x, you're doing the derivative with respect to lambda. So that would give you x. Lambda y would give you y. And then the 10,100 lambda would give you just 10,100. You might notice that the Third partial derivative with respect to lambda is the same thing as your g of xy. So recall that g of xy was indeed x plus y minus 10,100. So it's important to note that that final derivative will be the same as lowercase g. So that completes finding the three partial derivatives. And then we move on to the third and final step, which is to set all of those partial derivatives equal to 0. And then you're going to solve for x, y, and lambda. So it helps to rewrite all of this. Let's take all the derivatives and set them to 0. So we'll have 1 third x plus lambda equals 0. 1 third y squared plus lambda equals 0. And then finally, x plus y minus 10,100 is equal to 0. Now, there might be a number of ways for solving for x, y, lambda. Why don't we proceed as follows? In the first equation, we'll actually solve for lambda. So I'm going to subtract the 1 third x to the other side. So you'll have lambda is equal to negative 1 third x. In the second equation, we'll do the same thing. We'll solve it for lambda. And to do that, we'll subtract the 1 third y squared over to the other side. Now, since this quantity is equal to lambda and this quantity also is equal to lambda, they're going to be equal to each other. So we can set the negative 1 third y squared equal to negative 1 third x. And we can essentially divide out the negative 1 third. It appears on both sides of the equation. So it effectively cancels. You're left with y squared is equal to x. Now that's actually convenient because since we know that x is equal to y squared, we can take that and substitute it into the other equation, into that third equation. So we're going to replace the x with y squared in that third equation. So that would give us y squared plus y minus 10,100 is equal to 0. So all we have to do now is solve for y. And miraculously, it turns out that this equation actually does factor. Recall that to factor a simple quadratic like this, we would need numbers that add to make positive 1 but then also simultaneously multiply to make negative 10,100. And fortunately, there are two numbers out there that do just that. And those two numbers are going to be a negative 100 and a positive 101. You might want to pause here and just make sure that those two numbers both add to make positive 1 and also multiply to make negative 10,100. Now that we have correctly factored it, we can set each factor equal to 0. So we'll have y minus 100 equals 0. y plus 101 equals 0. We'll solve these equations independently. We'll add the 100 to the other side. 
to get one answer and then subtract the 101 to the other side to get the other. Now, remember that Y represents the number of units being manufactured. You certainly cannot manufacture negative 101 units. So we're going to reject this answer based on the context of the question. This gives us our final answer for Y of 100. And then to get X, we simply recall by looking at this C of equations that we have, that X was equal to Y squared. That's gonna be the easiest way of proceeding. So to find X, we'll just take the Y and square it. So we'll do 100 squared. And of course, this is going to give us a one with four zeros after it, also known as 10,000. So that would be your answer for X. And just a reminder, if we go all the way back, it was machine A that was manufacturing X units, and it was machine B that was manufacturing Y units. So really, we should polish our answer and say that machine B will be manufacturing 100 units, and then machine A will be manufacturing 10,000 units. So just a little clarification there at the end.